them from their holding flasks. An experiment like this was first performed by Stanley Miller and Harold Urey in the 1950s. The starting gases are now introduced into a large reaction vessel. We could shine ultraviolet light on this mixture, simulating the early sun. But in this experiment, the gases will be sparked, as the primitive atmosphere was, by early lightning. After only a few hours, the interior of the reaction vessel becomes streaked with a strange brown pigment, a rich collection of complex organic molecules, including the building blocks of the proteins and the nucleic acids. Under the right conditions, these building blocks assemble themselves into molecules resembling little proteins and little nucleic acids. These nucleic acids can even make identical copies of themselves. In this vessel are the notes of the music of life, although not yet the music itself. Now, no one so far has mixed together the gases and waters of the primitive Earth and at the end of the experiment had something crawl out of the flask. There's still a great deal to be understood about the origin of life, including the origin of the genetic code. But we've only been at such experiments for 30 years. Nature has had a four billion year head start. Incidentally, there's nothing in such experiments that's unique to the Earth. The gases we start with, the energy sources we use, are entirely common through the cosmos. So chemical reactions something like these must be responsible for the organic matter in interstellar space and the amino acids in the meteorites. Similar chemical reactions must have occurred on a billion other worlds in the Milky Way galaxy. Look how easy it is to make great globs of this stuff. The molecules of life fill the cosmos. Now, what would life elsewhere look like? Even if it 